Hello and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine and I'll be your host. This is episode 95. It is September 22nd and it is cloudy and sunny off and on outside today. Uh, here in Vancouver, Washington, we have rapidly changed into fall. Um, it was quite warm right up until when it wasn't. <laughs> So we can tell that it is September now because the temperatures dropped and it started raining. It rains here. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome new and returning viewers. Thank you for coming and spending some time with me today. I am glad that you are taking the time to watch or connect or whatever you are doing while you are yearning in your home or wherever you are. <laughs> I am in my craft room, which is upstairs in my house. <laughs> so that was kind of some of the life stories that were going on around here. I have been finishing up the physical therapy on my ankle. I just have one more appointment left and I am getting a lot more strength and flexibility back to my ankle after my badly sprained issue <laughs> when I fell down. Um, I, it's been, it's taken extra time, uh, getting to physical therapy is a challenge, but, um, I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to do this and allow it to heal nicely. <laughs> and hopefully that will keep it strong for a while to come. We also have spent a lot of time in uh, furniture stores lately. We were looking for a couch for downstairs and then as we were going through that um, we decided we needed to replace the broken couch upstairs in the room next door that I sit in during the day um, because that couch was so broken and it was no longer no longer had good back support for me and I need that. So um, we did two couch searches at the same time and the my exercise crafting room now does have a brand new clip-in Ikea couch and the, the living room downstairs will be getting its couch as soon as that comes in. It is on order. Um, so that takes up a bit of time to go and search for that and test out a bunch of couches. Uh, I don't, I don't always notice my back being sore. Last summer I did a round of physical therapy for that, but getting up and down off of a million couches in one day, that, uh, was a clear reminder of my back. <laughs> I'm getting old. No, just, just a little easily worn out, so. Those are some of the stories going on here. Let's move into some yarnings and adventures in knitting. So I am wearing a finished object. I'm going to stand up a little bit so you can see. This is nice and long. This is a long cowl. It has fair isle in it. I don't mind doing it where you can see the, the fair isle stripes, but I found that one. I found that wearing it like this kind of gave it more of a vest-like look. Um, so I received a skein of hand spun from my dear friend Rebecca of the Fiber and Dice podcast. She's Engineers Falcon on Instagram. Um, and she sent me this lovely hand spun. Mm, I have the tag in here. Blue Bonnet Fibers is her Etsy shop, and this is Through the Cosmos special for K Celebrates 40. And it's this beautiful whites and blues and aquas and rose. Um, it reminds me of the colors, the um, Pantone colors of the, the blue, the light blue and the light pink. Um, and so you can see that as I went, it changed colors. So I designed something to do 
cowl to um, cables and fair isle. So you can see the cable here has a little fair isle lining it and the fair isle is three little hearts um, in each section. I've got some dotted dotted texture there and some corrugated ribbing there. Um, so I just kind of put together a couple different motifs and spread them around the cowl. Got a nice big section in the middle that divides it with just the hand spun. And I love this. It turned out even better than I thought it would. Um, I, I love the colors. I love the length. Um, the, the fiber was from, nope, I don't remember. I don't remember what, um, who the dyer was. I think it was Yarn vs. Zombies. And then Rebecca spun it. And then the other, the other yarn in here is, um, this is what I have left. I have this much left little balls and the end of the bigger ball. This is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Woo Boo in the Stumptown Brown colorway that I made my Nanny Swaymo sweater two years ago out of. I had a nice big quantity. I think there was 600 yards of that and almost 200 yards of this and that's what I have left and I'm gonna make some nice long um, mitts and use the color work, the color work elements in there as well. They won't be exactly the same because the color, the hand spun will come from different sections, but I think that's gonna look really cool and it will be a very nice thing in the winter because I can also do it this way um, and keep myself warm when it is cold out. Like I said, I don't mind seeing bits of the Fair Isle strands, but I think that will be a lovely, and I could even wear it like a hood. Yeah. Um, I also like it with this dress because it's got the aqua accents on it. So that is my first finished object to show you and the remaining, the remaining yarn that will turn into bits. So that would be needle adjacent. Um, the next thing I'll show you, I finally got actual ribbon for my Entangled Vines tunic. Now that it has blocked out, the bottom is all nice and straight. And I just made casings on the front and the back so that the ribbon could go through. It's one single piece of ribbon that goes into all, each section and then those are what hold it up with a big ribbon on the side. I have worn this as a dress with leggings and it looked very nice. So that was finished during Stash Dash as was the surgery to this one. This one, I took a lot of the fabric out of the bodice. Um, it had too much. I used, I did too many short rows and um, took out, I don't remember how many grams, but now it is much more wearable. And this was a self-design three years ago but it just never fit right. So those two things are complete. And then I have some works in progress. All right, oh, I didn't go get my Flotus. I wonder where that is. I'll show that next time. Um, these are the socks that I have on the needles. I have the heels put in. I used my sock ruler for the first time to measure where the heel needed to be. So when I got to my, my 
set amount. Then I add it in the heels. And so now I am just working normally. Um, this is a beautiful purple and deep red. This is 716, 716 sock um, in her self striper. I think it's HXC. And the colorway is bored now. A vampire willow buffy reference. And that is in my adorable kissing elephant bag. These two things made it eligible for the Pow Cal, although I didn't enter it in as an actual entry. Um, this is Creative Mojo bag by her, by Joanne. She has an Etsy shop and a podcast. So these socks are coming along. Um, they got put a little bit on the sideline for the next thing. Which is a giant pile of hats. So I had been thinking about putting together something of the another crafty girl minis that I got. Um, the color was here's the tag, crafty girl. Um, I had the I'm gonna wreck it mini skein bundle, and so I had set that. And this aside, which is a Cyborg's craft room to put together because I thought those would be nice. It's leftover from one of the um, superpowers shawls. And I had put them in a bag and that same day I found out that Megan, the dyer behind Cyborg's craft room, passed away unexpectedly. So that gave me an even greater push to get these on the needles. So this one uses the Cyborg's Craft Room. It stripes in alongside. This is a sock head hat. Um, this is slightly shorter than the sock head pattern. Not a lot. Um, and it used four, one, two, three, four of the mini colors. Not quite all of each skein, but the same number of rows for each one. So that turned out really nice. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to make another one with the other three minis. So I cast on a smaller one. And this time, because the stitch count was a little different, things pooled a little differently. So this uses three of the colors. Um, and then on the top and the bottom. So I still had a little bit of each of the seven colors. And so I made a magic ball of the, the most, the most appropriate seeming color, uh, colors next to each other so that it kind of could flow. And this one is a size in between those two. It's a little bigger, so it pooled a little differently. And I decided that I didn't mind it being a magic ball with the little magic knots that Paula, that Paula explains how to do on a sock head hat because there's no knots in the brim. It's just in the slouchy part, so it's not like it's going to rub on anything. So then I had done three and I thought, well, I could use some more of my scraps. So this one also has um, a Thoroughly Thwacked, who is now Fierce Fibers, I think. One of her colors um, that I'd used for a shawl a few years back. Um, that was um, maybe 2013. So um, I thought, hey, I could make them for all of my nieces and nephews. So I got started on that and use more scraps out of my scrap bin. So this is the other color that was from the Rose City Yarn Crawl Shawl that I did, those two colors, and the leftovers from a pair of socks that I did in some Patton's Croix. 
It's not the softest yarn ever, but it's not going to be right up against the head. This nice MCN is going to, and then I striped the top. And so then the fifth one that is complete uses a sparkle yarn from Wool Gatherings. Um, so on the round, spontaneous sock that I made some socks that I ended up giving to Karen, bulky, and the blue is a stroll tonal that I used for um, Ren shawls way back in the day. And it's pinstriped in the top, which is really cool. Just single, single stripe, single row stripes looks pretty neat, especially from afar. And the pooling on the bottom of here is really neat. So this is currently five. I have a sixth on the needle and then I decided there are two other children that I am excited about making them for. So I'm going to get to eight. So this one has, um, do I have any of her other sparkle in here? No, not yet. This is Huckleberry Knit Silk and Sparkle, which I don't think she has anymore. Um, in a gray color chalkboard, concrete, I don't remember. Um, and I made a Ren scarf for my mother-in-law out of it. And then it's got some other 716 that was from my first CK goodie bag. So I'm just using up a whole bunch of stuff that I had small balls of. These are super easy to crank out. Um, the ribbing, I have to pay a little more attention, but then once I get to the to the body, it's just stuck down the round. So I am really excited that I am getting some hats made. Um, there are there are some people in my family that are going to be excited about this of the kids, and some of them won't, and that's okay. They will have a hat from Aunt Christine and they can choose to wear it or not, but I am enjoying making it. I would like them to have something that I have made them. And I think that this is a fun way to do it. It's fun little canvases that I can play with and zoom along on. These work really nice on the bus. So this has been my major project. Um, over the last week, two weeks, I have not, I was not sure what I was going to cast on next. And so this was kind of the until I figure it out project. And now it has become a project of its own. But I have also swatched for the next thing. Um, I have this Dancing Dog Dye Works that I got at the first ZK, her Tango Sock in the Chili Verde colorway. When the things wound up, and I had two swatches from different needle sizes previously that didn't quite work out for me um, with another sweater I was going to do, but I had to do one more swatch because I still needed a looser gauge. Um, it washes up really nice, it fills in the holes, it looks a little um, airy before you wash it, um, but then it comes out really nice. It is superwash, 100% superwash merino, and I have uh, 1320 yards of it. So I have a nice big quantity. It's kind of a light fingering weight, and I'm going to make the Risen Cardi. Zoom away from my show notes here. Here's a nice side view. Um, this is by Melanie Berg. It's got cables at the bottom of the arm and the bottom of the sweater. Um, and it's very open front. Let's see, there's another. It's a very open front cardi. So it doesn't need to be, it just needs to fit well in, on my back basically. It doesn't have to close and touch edges in the front. So I have just under what 
yarn requirement it has. I have considered on this bottom ribbing along just the bottom of the sweater here using some of my hand spun just for a fun, colorful Christini touch. And I think I might do that. We'll see how well my yarn stretches because it is a little lighter fingering weight. It might, it might be a little different. So I need to wind up this second skein so that I can alternate. It's very um, hand dyed. So I wanna alternate the whole way through and that will get cast on quickly. For yarning spinning a tail, I am continuing to work on my hand spun that I worked on for Tour de Fleece. This is the first actual skein off the spindle. I had previously attempted to ply it with a pink lace weight, my, my Peruvian al alpaca, excuse me. Um, and by the, once I washed and dried the swatches, they came out very parallelogrammy. I tried multiple ways of doing it and always at an angle. So you can see this end comes out farther than this end when the top and the bottom are parallel. So too much twist was being added. So I am now doing a two ply. This will not give me quite as much yardage as if I were making a two ply with another yarn, but it is coming out pretty nice. Um, I have the second one on my plying spindle now, and I'm not sure what I'll do with it. It's a little different of a, of a finished yarn than I was assuming it would be. So it will be a little different of a finished project. I did not count the count how many yards this was or weigh it yet. But I usually do that when I put it on the Nitty Naughty and I guess I neglected the counting portion of that. <laughs> so that's the primary spinning going on. I've spun just a little bit on my Acreworks spindle. So I will get back to that. For my sewing category is not on there. <laughs> Stitch through time. I did get another set of embroidery floss to make another frosted pumpkin stitchery project. Um, it is a Halloween one. The previous one is sitting over here. My little lovely honeybees and I got some hanging um, embroidery hoops for them there. So I'm excited to get this going. And I think that everything else for sewing is just kind of a work in progress, but I have cleared off a good chunk of my desk so I can get to my sewing machine again. So I'm excited about sewing again. So let's quickly touch on some non-knitting segments with Sagas of Geekery. For now, playing. Um, we have played Manhattan Project Chain Reaction, um, Eminent Domain, Trajan, Xenon Profiteer a couple times, um, Race for the Galaxy, Viticulture, we got to introduce it to Eric's brother, um, and Legendary. We played Legendary several times with some new combos we hadn't tried. We still don't have the Civil War expansion that will be coming. <laughs> we haven't seen it at the game store yet to buy. For now watching, uh, we watched, we started and finished the season of Shannara Chronicles that was on Netflix. It is an MTV series, and Eric has read a lot of the Terry Brooks books. Um, so he had a little different perspective of it than I did, and it was, it was really a cool fantasy series. 
we have also started the 100, which is CW, CW series. Um, they are, and Siri thinks I'm talking to her, um, they are post-apocalyptic and have lots of uh, actors, actresses that I have seen on other things. It's a Vancouver, BC location, and so it's it's always fun to spot those background characters. I'm really enjoying that. Only seasons one and two are on Netflix right now, but the third is supposed to come before mid-season when the next season of the show will be out. And then on my own, I've been watching Gilmore Girls. I fell madly in love with the show. I'm not sure where I was at when I talked to you guys less, left, when I talked to you guys last, but I have fallen madly in love with this show. Um, I am really looking forward to the revival. There's just something wonderful and homey and romantic about the characters and um, I can see traits of myself in several of the characters, and that makes it really fun to watch. So um, that's that. And then I also am watching The Good Wife. That one features the actor who plays Logan Huntsberger on The Gilmore Girls. And so I thought I would finally check that one out because um, I hadn't, hadn't previously. I'm pretty sure that there's something else that we watched in there, but I cannot remember what it was. <laughs> my um, cord is touching my screen and trying to do things for me on my show notes over here. <laughs> for fanciful chatter, um, my I pointed out my Nicole dress that I love the aqua matching the blue that's in this end of the cowl. Uh, this one has really nice arms um, and because they're so uh, closely fit I'll be able to wear um, some of my pullovers and cardigans that are hand knits over top of it really easily this fall and probably into the winter and that makes me happy. Um, I have Colourpop lips and I am wearing a blush. I don't know these lights are not awesome for seeing it. But this is my first um, NARS blush in the color Sin. And in the package, it doesn't look like much. Oh, I can see myself. <laughs> um, it doesn't look that thrilling. But when I put it on, it was really perfect. It's got the same undertone. It just, when I looked at it in the store, it really didn't grab me. So that is the joy of going into Sephora when there are not crazy hordes of people and asking for some suggestions because I was going to go get their color orgasm and I think this one is way more suiting to me because the other one has more orange. So that is a fun splurge that I got for my cheeks. <laughs> it really hasn't been until the last year that I have felt comfortable wearing blush because I have a natural blush that I have to, that's a little, it, it travels around my face. It's, it's something that my sisters have as well and so I have never had foundation that has evened out my skin tone enough that I felt comfortable putting blush back on until now and I've been using um, um it's a Sephora brand that's just their makeup forever um, I've been using their foundation with a foundation brush and that has been working really well so it is very fun to be girly that way I also finally got around to adding color back into my hair. There are pinks and reds and in the back there is pretty greeny blue but it hides in this light. Um, these are the reds over here and I feel more like myself when my color is back. It's, it's not my whole head but it's not super subtle either and I really like it. 
for Book of Cooking, um, Yuna the Instapot helped me with a pasta dish that turned out really good that was basically dump and stir and put on the table. Um, I also made a Moroccan inspired meal with a simmer sauce from World Market this week and a tahini yogurt um, sauce on top of Zaytar um, acorn squash. It turned out really good. It's maybe not one that I am excited about making for myself again, but my husband really liked it. Eric was super happy. And so I might try some other variations on this. For the happiness continues, the Wick Wick podcast has returned. That is what you can when you can. This is the book by the authors that host the podcast and they have been on a hiatus and they are back and I really am glad to be back listening to their cheerfulness and their great tips um, about how they are integrating Wick Wick into their life. It encourages me. I am also really excited because this year I am going to go to the Oregon Flock and Fiber Festival in Canby, Oregon. I have not been for quite a few years, um, but this year um, my niece Leah and I are going to go. Eric's going to take us and we're going to go down there for a little while and she's going to get to look at some of the animals and I'm going to get to do a little shopping and um, I am... I'm excited to see some of the, the friends that I've made over the years that are vendors, and maybe I'll see some other people that I know, and that will be lots of fun. So if you are going to be at Oregon Flock and Fiber, or later on this year at the Columbia Gorge Fiber Festival, I will probably be there as well. All right, I think that is everything. And look, I have a pretty nice start onto the color on this hat. It's amazing how I can just zoom around it. Um, so you can get in touch with me. You can connect with me on the internet. I am Christine with a K on Ravelry. I am KDLB, just the letters, on Instagram. The Yarnings Podcast group is on Ravelry, where we have some prizes forthcoming for some summer knit alongs. Um, and the yarning, the website with links to everything that I talk about is yarningspodcast.com, all squished together. So I think that's it for today, guys. Until next time, that's the story. Bye.